All right, hi everyone. Welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Iman Shu, and we are continuing our Lightning Web Components Masterclass. Uh, in the last tutorial, we talked about the difference between Lightning Web Services and the Locker Security, and why is that important when it comes to Lightning Web Components, and that pretty much wrapped up our basic theoretical or foundational knowledge around Lightning Web Components in general. The next step here would actually be to start learning a bit of JavaScript before, before we jump into LWC. The reason being that we know that LWC requires JavaScript inherently and a lot of us do not really know the foundational concepts of JavaScript which might make it a bit difficult to learn or understand how LWC works. So my idea in the upcoming tutorials would basically be around creating a crash course out of JavaScript so that you know the bare minimum requirements or the bare minimum essentials that you need to actually master LWC and you kind of know the JavaScript that you need. You don't have to start from the first page of the JavaScript library and complete the entire book. It's not like that, but I'll take you through the most important topics and I'll explain you. We'll do examples, we'll do use cases and then with that confidence on JavaScript, we'll start our journey on Lightning Web Components. All right, great. On that note, let's jump into JavaScript and understand what is JavaScript really. All right, so JavaScript is, an, is a programming language. We all know that. It is basically made to ensure that web pages are interactive and dynamic. Now, to go back to the history, if, 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 you, if you started with HTML and CSS and JavaScript, you could write or code a page or let's say a section on a browser. However, to make it interactive, when I say interactive, let's say what, what, what do I mean by interactive? I mean what happens if I click a button, if I type a message, if I hit a particular uh, keyword, what really should happen? How should the browser interact with me or how should the browser react based on my inputs or my events is basically called interactivity. How do you add interactivity to a plain HTML code? By adding JavaScript to it. That is basically writing code in the JavaScript language. That's what JavaScript is made for. All right. So it adds interactivity, allows responding to user actions, meaning any anything that you do on the browser, it responds back, right? And that's basically reactivity or interactivity. It manipulates the web content, meaning as soon as you say one plus one and you press enter, it gives you the result two, right? That means it's, it's manipulating the content that you see on the screen. It allows you to connect to servers, any kind of information that it needs to fetch from the database. It's, it could be a SQL database or some other database. It can get that information and show it to you. And it also allows you to enable complex applications. All right. So most of the code that you see on the internet today in and inherently is basically JavaScript, right? Because anything that's on the browser is inherently JavaScript, which is on the client side. All right. So this runs in the browser and it is an event, dri event driven client side language, a, a bit of terminology here, but it runs in the browser. That means basically, let's say you are using the Chrome, you are using Safari browser, you're using edge, you're using internet explorer. So anything that you do on that particular page, the way you interact with it, the things that are happening behind the scenes, JavaScript is doing it. The JavaScript is the brains behind it. Okay. And it is an event driven client side language. What does that mean? Event driven means if I tell you something, that's when you react, right? So what was the event me telling you to do something? So I tell you, you should learn or you should understand lightning web components. And that's when you start looking at these tutorials. So it was Himanshu driven, correct? But here, what are events? Events are nothing but actions more like click or hover or submit. These are called events, right? Or let's say refresh right or let's say you know inspect any kind of event that happens on the browser enables javascript and why is it called client side because it runs on the browser meaning when you are using the system you are using a browser things happen behind the scenes from javascript so it is on the client side not on the server side because it does not really need a database connected to it it just needs you to do any kind of inputs all right it is used for web development, game development, desktop applications, mobile apps, server side development. So pretty much any and everything that you want to develop on the browser. So for example, websites, right? For example, any website inherently it is JavaScript code that is allowing us to, you know, 
make users interact with the website all right so any any and every kind of development inherently used to be just javascript now you know newer technologies have come and you can actually code or in proprietary languages in other languages but inherently and primarily most of the most of the applications have javascript on the client side all right great that is a bit about javascript what i want you to think about is like if you still did not understand what i talked about in the last 3 4 points think like this html is the hardware css is the design and javascript is the software that makes the hardware and design useful okay html is the skeleton css is the skin javascript is the nervous system bringing all of it to life all right so if i mean like you can consider it as a soul basically if you are a, if if you consider html and css as the human being but it is just a physical representation it does not have a soul inside it it's pretty much dead right so if you have to keep it alive or make it alive javascript is the thing it's the nervous system it's basically the brains behind it that ensures that the html and the css have life with it have life in it similarly software if if you if you just have an iphone or if you just have a power bank it won't really work if the functionality in, inside it does not work okay so hardware html is basically like the hardware okay the look and feel is the css it should have this particular slot at this particular place it should show these many icons but what should happen when you click on the icon what should happen when someone double clicks on the icon what should happen if someone long presses the icon all of that is javascript okay just an example javascript is the software that is making the hardware and the design useful okay some interesting facts javascript was really actually created in just 10 days back in 1995 all right so it just took 10 days to create javascript so just imagine the powerful be powerful nature of javascript and today everyone needs javascript but it was just created in 10 days just 10 days that's it all right and despite the name we we hear the name javascript so it is more like java script right but it has nothing to do with java so you don't have to worry do i need to iman should do i need to learn java for javascript no there's no relation between java and javascript okay javascript is a completely different language it's a client side language and yes definitely it is one of the most popular programming languages in the world when when we started off uh, i mean my when i started creating a resume for myself um, as soon as i was almost you know done with college uh, we put like you know i'm proficient in html css and javascript right and then we joined domains and business units and uh, different technology but essentially this is one of the most popular programming languages used widely it has a lot of variants and versions lot of flavors but it is again one of the most core client side programming languages that still exists in the world and it's it's very helpful and it is the base and the crux of everything and like i already said salesforce is also going back to the basics right that's why they have come to lwc so that they can comply with the modern web stand standards and the modern web standards are basically tied coupled with html5 css3 and angular or react javascript right basically the versions of javascript all right great now as part of this crash course we are not going to do everything but we are going to do all the interesting and the important things that need us to be that 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 we need to know so that we can actually jump into lwc see the primary fundamental is not to learn and understand and master javascript in its entirety no that's not our use case our use case is to be very smart and just know what exactly do i need to pick up as concepts from the javascript as a whole syllabus and just pick up those specific chapters and use them for my lwc learning that's the whole idea okay so what are we going to talk about i'll just cover it right here we'll talk about variables in javascript we'll talk about arrays we'll talk about events objects loops functions how to debug and there are two other concepts one is the spread operator and the other one is the this keyword all right so these are pretty much the entire crux of the syllabus that we will cover as part of the javascript that i want you to do beforehand and then we will jump into lwc lightning web components okay for those of you who already know or you are already masters of javascript and you are still on this playlist you will have to wait a bit longer because lightning web components will come up after i have ensured that i have delivered all the javascript crash course to you which is about these 8 or 10 topics all right great that's all i wanted to cover as part of this video i hope this fair bit in, of intro, introduction on javascript was helpful uh, we'll jump into each of these topics in detail but again keep in mind that this is just a crash course and you should be smart and intelligent enough to pick up the 
crux of it don't go into the depth of it but more like just pick up okay a for apple okay fine apple i just have to create a sentence from apple i don't need to understand where did apple come from what is the spelling of apple no we don't need to know all of that we just need to know that okay apple can be used in a sentence and i just have to frame a sentence all right great so that's all for this particular tutorial i will see you in the next one bye